Hi, hi, and how are you? Welcome to another episode of Cyberpunk Librarian. I'm Daniel Messer, your friendly neighborhood cyberpunk librarian, and today we're going to be talking about Audacity. Now, Audacity is a sort of open source audio editor for Linux, Windows, and Mac, so you can get it on almost any platform that you care to have it on. The good thing about it is it's a very advanced audio editing system that's still very accessible to a beginner. So you don't have to be an audio engineer to even understand it. And I'm going to show you exactly what that means in today's screencast as I show you how to make your very own podcast in Audacity. Now, you don't have to make a podcast with Audacity. You can use it for many other things. Um, I use it personally not just for podcasting, but I've also mixed music in it. I've used it as a sequencer of sorts. It's got a lot of capabilities and a lot of flexibility. So if you need an audio editor for anything in your library or in your life, I cannot recommend Audacity highly enough. So let's get to work and show you exactly how you can make something using it. Okay, everybody, here we are again in our XFCE desktop in Linux. Now, the good thing about Audacity is you can get it for lots of platforms. You can get it for Linux, but it's also available for Windows and Macintosh, too. And each one is free, so you don't have to worry about paying for any of this. And you're going to see why that's so cool here in a minute, because Audacity does so much for you, and it does it you know, for nothing. Um, obviously, if you want to contribute to the Audacity program, feel free to throw some money their way. It's a wonderful program, and it's a uh, it's a wonderful project to support. But for now, let's get let's get busy and show you how to use it. So, uh, depending on how you uh, what um, operating system you're using, you'll need to install Audacity. I'll put a link in the show notes to their website. Um, if you're using Windows or Mac, you can just go to their website and get it. If you're using Linux you can get it from the Ubuntu Software Center or whichever software center is available for your version of Linux. So, I've already got mine installed, and since I use it often, it's right down here in my little quick bar, and I'm going to launch that. It takes it a moment or two to start up, as it is a fairly complicated program. There we go. Now then, 
Some people might look at this and, you know, gape in awe because there's a lot of stuff going on up here. I mean, what's this do and what's all this stuff? Well, let me put your mind at ease and tell you that you really don't have to worry about most of this. For the most part, we're only going to concern ourselves with about this portion over. So all this stuff here is going to be our playground, and this stuff over here we won't have to worry about so much. So, what we have here is just the initial layout. Now, you'll notice that Audacity kind of looks like, you know, an old-fashioned tape recorder setup. You've got, you know, a pause and a play, a stop, a fast-forward or a rewind or a skip to start or a skip to end, depending on what you're doing at the time. And it's also got the big shiny red record button, which of course is what makes this useful, is the ability to record. Now, with that in mind, that's your controls. That's the main set of controls you're going to use for the most part. That's what will get things done. These little buttons right here, the little line and this thing here, and little pencil and the magnifying glass and stuff like that, those are basically used for editing. So we'll get into that here in a few moments. But to, uh, to kind of get started, to kind of get things kicked off here, I'm just going to quick record an audio track to show you how easy that is. Now, there's two ways to record an audio track. The first one is just to simply click the red button, and it'll immediately start recording, and there's nothing wrong with that. Me, I typically take my hands off the mouse most of the time and use the keyboard as it's quicker, faster, more efficient, and you don't have to search for anything. You know where certain keys are. They're always going to be there. You don't have to look around for your mouse, maybe knock over your coffee while you're doing something and all that. So, instead of hitting record with my mouse, which you can do if you like, I'm just going to hit the R button on the keyboard. And there we go. Now I'm recording a track. You can tell you're recording a track because if you look up here in, in this sort of setup, it's got a, uh, a red bar. Now, red is always record on almost any audio editor you use. Red is going to be your record. So if you see something in red, chances are it's talking about recording functions, and this is no different. This is telling you your levels. And, of course, the farther it is to this side over to the right here, the higher the levels are. And I'm actually sitting a ways back from the microphone. So you may need to adjust your audio levels as needed, and you can do that over here with these controls. This adjusts your volume, this adjusts your microphone. I'm actually pretty satisfied with this, and I'm not going to touch those right now. Um, as you can also see right through here, you've got these little spikes and a sort of um, spectrographic thing that tells you how... Well, this isn't really spectrographic. This is more of an oscilloscope thing that tells you uh, what your levels are and things like that. So this, this and this provide you two obvious indicators that you are recording, and that's very important. I, I've used other audio recorders that didn't give you this much information that you were recording something, and it, it's the worst thing in the world when at the end of something that you really want to get an audio copy of, you find out that your audio recorder wasn't actually recording like you thought it was. With Audacity, it makes it blatantly obvious. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Now, instead of hitting the stop button up here with my mouse, I typically just hit the space bar. And there it is. It stops it immediately, dead in its tracks, and we have a recording here. So there we are. Now, I can save this recording, I can do things with this recording, and I'm not really going to do anything with this. We're, we're going to record something different, because what I'm going to show you today is how to make a simple podcast setup. And by simple, I mean there's going to be a few things to it. There'll be an intro musical bit, there'll be an introductory spoken part, there'll be another quick musical bit to cut to the main part, a third quick musical bit to cut to sort of the outro, and then the closing musical thing. So there's a few musical things in there, there's some spoken things in there, and I'll show you how to sort of mix those together in creative ways to make something that sounds pretty good. Now, the first thing you also need to divest yourself of, before you even sit down to do this, is the idea that you're going to churn out a professional quality audio piece. You're not a professional audio person, you're not an audio engineer, you're not a professional recorder. So if you churn out something that's good, then it's good, and that's excellent, because you're not a professional. 
I mean, if a professional sits down at this, of course they're going to make something awesome that you're just not going to be able to emulate because you either don't have the skills or the years of training or things like that. So don't worry about that. Make something. Don't worry about the quality so much as what you've made. So, let's go ahead and close this out. And once I have an audio track recorded, it's here. This is my audio track, and I can start doing things with it. I can come down here to the bottom and move things about and see what it's doing. I can click on this here, which is a selection tool, much like you see in a word processor. And I can use that to select bits of the audio recording itself. Tell your recording a track because if you look up here... Hear that? I'll play it one more time, just in case the microphone didn't pick it up. Okay, see that? What that is, is just the bit that I highlighted. In other words, it's only playing what I selected. Now, that selection tool works for anything like that. I can add effects to just that bit. I can select the whole thing and add an effect to that. I can manipulate just this portion, or I can select another portion and manipulate that. So that's what your selection tool does. Beyond that, there is a envelope tool, which I don't use all that much. There's a draw tool, which I don't use too much, so I'm going to keep this very simple and show you basically two different things here today. We're going to show you the selection tool, which I just have, so halfway done. And the second thing I'm going to show you is the magnifying glass. What this does is zoom in and out. So say, for instance, I want to remove a bit of silence between something. Now, a bit of silence is just that, where you just don't hear anything. No one's talking, nothing's happening. It could be short, it could be long, whatever. So let's say, for instance, this right here. Let's take a look. That doesn't look like much is happening there, because you don't see all these spikes like you see when I'm talking. And if I play that, yeah, you're not hearing much, just a little bit of static. Say I want to take that out. I want to just remove it. But I want to get very precise. I want to make sure I don't remove any of this, which is me talking, and any of this, which is me talking. So I want to get in there and make sure I get the, exactly the right bits. I can click on the magnifying glass and click on that area, and it literally zooms in to my waveform here. And now it's the same, same bit, same thing here. I'll highlight it again and play it just to show you. See? Not much happening. But I'm much closer and I can make a much more precise edit now that I'm in here. Now if I want to take that out, absolutely simple. I can go ahead and hit the delete button on my keyboard. Gone. And if I look at that and say, oh my god, what have I done? I didn't want to delete that. Everything's ruined. No. Audacity is like most any other program. There is an undo feature, so if I come up here to my edit menu and hit undo, delete, or control Z, which is pretty standard on any other thing, I can put it right back, and there's my silence. So that's just a little quick basic editing tutorial as how to get, you know, things in and out. So, I've got my track, but this isn't the track I want to work with. I want to work with something that's a podcast. So I'm going to close this out. And then, before I actually get into bringing things into Audacity to do a podcast setup, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to do a podcast. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole show on how to podcast, so that's, that's something else later. As a matter of fact, we'll actually cover that later in another show, I promise. But, if you want to record anything that's sort of complex, say more than two or three tracks, you're going to want to write down, or at least, you know, just make a back-of-the-napkin kind of thing, as to what you want to do, because as the old saying goes, proper planning prevents piss-poor performance. And even five minutes of planning will make your life so much easier when it comes to this kind of thing. So, I'm going to minimize this for a moment and show you a file, or a folder rather, that I have set up. So I knew I was going to re be recording this episode, and I knew I would be talking about audio. So I have a thing here in my audio folder called demo. And as you see, I have some files in here, mp3 files and one OGG file. Now what this OGG is is short for Ogvorbis, and Ogvorbis is a kind of um, open source version of mp3 in some ways. It's an audio file that doesn't have any licensing things associated with mp3. 
So if you need to write yourself an audio program that exports to something you don't want to have to deal with MP3 licensing, you can use AUG, and it's very good. So I've got an AUG file here, but it, it does essentially the same thing. As a matter of fact, when you play one and then play the other, you really can't tell the difference. So I've got a few files here, and what these are are basically the assets for my show. Now an asset is anything you're going to use for your show. Um, your podcast or a video, it does not matter. But you'll notice that I've got all these things right here. They are ready to go. And the reason they're ready to go is I did about five minutes of planning. I knew I was going to need things like an intro. And I was going to need an opening, uh, opening bit. And this is my opening song right here. And I knew I would want to have a couple of instrumental things in there. So I've got this right here and this right here. These are a couple songs of mine that I'm just going to use because I don't have to worry about licensing them or anything. Um, then there's a middle part, and this middle part is a spoken part, and I've conveniently named it middle part. And I've got an outro here, which is another spoken part, but all of this is in one place. Oh, but wait, I, I seem to be missing something here. I don't, hmm, I don't have an intro. No worries, let's record one. That's what this is all about, and let's go ahead and record an intro bit, and we'll start putting this together. So, the moral of the story is have a little planning done, do some things, and I am going to show you a few things about how to make some cuts and copies and edits and things like that. So, the first thing I do want to show you before we even get into this is how to edit a pre-existing audio file so you can use it in a piece. Now, this right here, this cyberpunk librarian opening, is all ready to go. It's already set and running and good to go. This tesseract is already set and running and good to go. But this true vision thing here, this little song of mine, that's not ready to go at all. That's still, look, it's 11.4 megs, it's high quality, it's the full song. I'm not going to put the full song in there, I just want a little bit. So let's get in there and edit that and I can show you how to edit some tools. So, I'm going to minimize that and get Audacity back here. We're going to go to File and Open. And by the by, all of the uh, all of your standard sort of uh, keyboard shortcuts work very well here too, and I use keyboard shortcuts very often. I'm not doing it here so I can illustrate things, but uh, Control O is open on almost any program you use, and if I hit it here, it does the same thing. So, okay. Let's go ahead and do it through the menu, though, for ease of use, and so you can see. So, File, Open, and OK. I'm going to go to my audio folder, and here's my demo. There we go. So, it was, yes, it was True Vision that wasn't ready to go. It needed some editing and trimming so I could just use a bit of it in the podcast. So I'm going to open that up. takes it a moment because it's a rather large file, but as you see, it's still opening it fairly quickly. Now, when you first open something like this in Audacity, it's going to fit the entire file into the screen. So if you have a big old 27-inch display, this is going to look, you know, fairly different than this, but I'm looking at this on my laptop display, which is definitely not 27 inches. So, We've got ourselves a setup here where here's my intro. You can tell it's much more quiet than the rest of the opening bits. You know, and here, here comes the chorus, I believe. And then there's some more quiet. Then it you know, finishes with a big finale and then fades out. So, okay, which, which part do, of that do I want to use? Where in the song is what I want you know, to grab? I, I don't know. And I wrote it. So what I'm going to need to do is listen to it and find out which parts I want. And in this part, it doesn't really matter so much. I just want something that sounds good. Maybe something sort of um, near the beginning, so I get that sort of easy layout type thing before it gets into the really, you know, sort of more musical and louder chorus. So, okay, I'm going to take my selection tool right here again, and I'm just going to put it right here. Beep. Now what that does is that will start this audio track at that point. If I put it all the way back here at the beginning, that's where it's going to start the audio track. I don't want that. I want to start it here. Because I know what this stuff is, and I know that I don't want it. So, okay, start here, and I'll hit play. Okay, okay, not bad. sort of easy listening type stuff, but then again, that's what I record. 
Okay, so we'll do that. That sounds good. And all right, I've already got it set up. And let's say I just want a few seconds of it. Um, let's say 20 seconds, 20 to 25 seconds. Doesn't have to be perfect. What I can do is, just like any word processor or whatever, I can, you know, use my selection tool again here and just drag it over. Now, if you look down here on the bottom, I've got this selection information set to length. And as I move this selection over, you can tell what the length is. So let me start this again, and we'll just do that and that. There, okay, I'll put it back to where I want it. And you notice the length says there is no length because it's there's nothing selected. So I'm going to drag this over a bit, and you'll see it's going up four seconds, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you know whatever. And let's bring it over to about twenty-five seconds. There we go. That looks that looks fine. Okay, so that's the bit that I want. We can take another listen to it to sort of make sure. Okay, that works. That works. Now then. In a word processor or something like that, you copy and paste things about to, you know, remove things or move things or put things in other places or, you know, if you're going to have a setup where you need this thing multiple times, you can just copy it and paste it multiple times. Well, guess what? You can do the same exact thing with Audacity. I'm going to come up here, edit, and I can copy. And as you see, control C and control V, all of that works just fine. So just for illustrative sake, copy. And at this point, I'm done. I don't really need this anymore. I'm done with it. I'm going to close it out. And then I'm going to edit and paste. And you should see I've got something very different than what I used to have. But if I play this, it's the bit that I copied. And as you can see, it's the right length of time and everything. So OK. To stop that because we don't need to listen to the whole bit now. But you notice, I, look at this. I got this part right here. I don't want that. I just want the part that starts, you know, right with the uh, sort of piano bits. So I'm going to need to take that out. And I don't want to take out the piano bits. So once again, I'm going to use my magnifying glass and zoom into that. There we go. And select it. And I can go backwards without any problem at all. There we go. All that's selected, I'll hit delete and it's gone. Okay, I think I'm ready to go with this. So I'm going to save it. Now, if you save something in Audacity, it wants to save it as a project, which is fine if you're making a big old project. I just want to export this so I can use it in something else. So I'm going to export it. And down here you have a selection of things you can export it in. I typically use either Aug Vorbis or MP3. I'm going to use MP3 this time. But you can use AUG or whatever. Audacity understands both without a care in the world. And I'm just going to call this True Vision Bit. Okay. I can change options for my MP3 file down here. I can affect the quality as to how good I want it or, you know, basically how small I want it. And I'll leave it at 256. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be uh, changing that later on. So, okay, 256 is okay. We'll save it. It'll ask me if I want to put some information, yes or no, whatever. I'll just go ahead and click OK. Saves it. Done. OK. I believe I actually put that in the right folder, too. Let's take a look here. True Vision Bit. Excellent. OK. So that's good to know. All righty then. So I'm going to minimize that because I accidentally clicked on it. OK. So let's, uh, let's go back to True Vision, and I'll just close this out. I don't need it anymore. No, I don't need to save changes. All right, back to Audacity. So, okay, I'm going to start laying out my podcast. Now, you notice back here when I was talking about it, I didn't have an intro bit. So let's record that intro bit. And for that, we'll just go back here and hit record. Now, I'll do a sort of radio announcer type voice, uh, sort of different than what I do for my normal voice, because that's how I do intro bits. I'm, I'm a ham, let's face it. I, you know, I don't have any problem hamming it up in front of a camera or in front of a microphone, as long as people are entertained. If they laugh at me and they think I'm funny or they're laughing at me because they're laughing at me, hey, at least they're laughing and that's the point. 
So, okay, hi, how are you, and welcome. This is going to be an intro bit for an Audacity piece and showing people how to make a podcast using a free and open source audio editor called Audacity. Now, this audio editor is available for Linux, Windows, and Mac. It's an excellent thing to use if you are on a shoestring budget and need a high-end audio editor for not much money. So, let's get right into things, and this is how to use Audacity. There we go. Now I'm going to play this back real quick and show you something. I'm going to go back to the beginning of it. I can use these. I can also use the home and end keys on my keyboard. Now then. So, okay. Hi, how are you? And welcome. This is going to be an intro bit for... An now, do you hear that? I'm going to put the microphone just a little bit closer to the, uh, to the um, speakers on my computer, which aren't that great. But I think you'll hear what I'm talking about here in just a sec. Hold on. You hear that hiss that's going through it? That's just sort of static and air coming off my microphone, which I admit is not the best microphone in the business. So, you know, that's okay, and it's, it's expected. I know that that's going to happen. The good news is, is it's very easy to fix, and I'm going to show you how to fix this for any, anything you're working on that you're recording, and you get that sort of static hiss. And it goes throughout the entire section. That's, that's too bad. But it's easy to fix, and I'm going to show you how to do it. The first thing you need to do is find an area that's making that noise that doesn't have your voice in it. So I bet this area will do nicely. If I hit play... Yes, nothing but static. Excellent. That's what I want. Audacity has several effects, and by several I mean... Oh, let's see here. 125 of them? Oh, I'm sorry. 135 of them. 99% of which you probably won't use, but hey, play around. These effects are there for you. But what I typically use in this situation is an effect called noise removal. Now, there are some there are effects that have funny names like wah-wah and compressor and all of that, but noise removal is quite simply named and it does exactly what it says. The first thing you want to do is what I've done. Highlight a section of noise that you're going to want to get out of there completely. And then select noise removal. This is a two-step process. Now that I've already selected my noise, I'm going to click the button here that says get noise profile. Beep. And it goes away. Now then, to actually remove the noise, I select the entire thing. So I'm just going to select all and go back to noise removal and then click OK. Now notice this went down considerably. It's now almost a flat line. And if I select that and play it, I'll put the microphone back up closer to my speakers. You hardly hear anything at all. It's great. And it takes it out for the entire thing. So this is a much cleaner sound now. Here, let me put the microphone close one more time. So, okay, hi, how are you, and welcome. This is going to be an intro bit for an Audacity piece Okay, excellent. So I don't have that sort of staticky hum in my, in, uh, in my bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this again. I'm going to export it, and I'm going to put it back in the demo, and I'm just going to call it intro, and we are going to be ready to roll. Save, and OK. Done. All right, let's make, let's make some magic happen. So, all right, I'm going to Going ahead and close this out. Now then, like I said, the biggest thing about Audacity is the ability to work with multiple tracks. Up to now, we've only been working with one. And that's that's okay if you only need one track. But chances are, if you're going to do a good a good sounding podcast, you're going to need a couple tracks. You're going to need at least a little musical bit in your own voice and whatever. So, okay, let's go ahead and start getting busy here. Now, like I said, proper planning prevents piss-poor performance, and I've already got my tracks named as to what I need. And that helps. So I'm going to go in here and open up a file. Now, a podcast like mine, for instance, typically starts with maybe an opening song. Well, here's my opening song. I'm just going to open it. There we go. As you can see, it's a very busy song because it's got all that, um, you know, that drum bit in it with the uh, hi-hats and all that. So, 
yeah, it's sort of machine gunish. So yeah, you see a lot of peaks and valleys. There. So okay, and you see at the end it kind of you know has this little fade out and stuff like that. So that's fun. So there's my first track, and that's the opening of my podcast. We are well on our way. So okay. I need my intro bit now. I've already recorded it. Now all I'm doing is layering things together. It's kind of like making a lasagna. You've got all your ingredients. Now you need to layer them together and get them mixed before you bake it. And by bake it, I mean save it. And I am really torturing this metaphor. So we're going to go ahead and open another file. And that will be my intro that I just recorded. It's fresh and new. Okay, so here it is. Now see it opens it in a new version of Audacity and that gives you the ability to edit it some more if you need to. I don't, so I'm going to show you the easier way to do this. We're going to close this out. Oh, I don't want to save changes. And we're going to come up here to Tracks and the first thing on here is Add a New Track. And I'm going to do exactly that. Add a new stereo track. And then we're going to import audio, and since our intro is already to go, there it is. Oh, they've changed a little bit of behavior, so I still have a blank track. Well, you know, accidents happen. I'm closing it out. Now, you'll notice that right up in here, it gives you the labels for the tracks, and I highly recommend using that because you can move tracks around. We can move tracks and shift them and do all kinds of things with them if need be. See, I can put the intro up top or down below. I typically layer these exactly as I'm going to use them. So, you know, the opening bit is first. The intro bit is second. There'll be a musical bit after that, which is third. So I have it, you know, set up pretty much just going down a list. So, okay. Now, as you see, if I play this right now, Everything plays at the same time. That's that's not desirable. That's not what we want. We want this to play after this. So, there is a button up here that does that. And I did lie to you a bit because we are going to use a third button called the Time Shift Tool. Now, Time Shift Tool is excellent because it makes you feel like Doctor Who and you can time shift things like audio and move it right on down the line here. So, I want to put this after my intro bit of music. So I'm going to do exactly that. So here we go. Nice. There we go. I'm going to kind of start it right there. Now at this point I have got multiple tracks going and if I hit play it's going to play it as if it were just a single track. So let's put my selection tool right here. And as you can see that's sort of the exit part of my song. Oh, but I'm talking. Oh, but I want the song to kind of play in the background as I start talking. Hmm, maybe if I fade out the song just before I start talking, and it'll fade out while I'm doing my little opening bit here. Well, that's easy enough. So I'm going to use my select tool again. I'm going to select, say, from here down to there, and we're going to fade it out. So as I'm talking, this will start fading out. Now this is the equivalent of just turning the volume down, really. And if you had an audio mixer, you know, one of those things with lots of knobs, you could do this on the fly. But we're not going to do this on the fly because I don't have an audio mixer available right now. So okay, we're going to go ahead and do an effect. And oh, look at this! Fade out! You don't even have to give it any options. It just does it. It starts fading from the point that you select and stops fading at the point that you end. So let's try this again. I'm going to hit play. So, okay, hi, how are you, and welcome. This is going to be an intro bit for an Audacity piece. And Okay, so as you can see, I was fading out. I still have my talky bit going there, but I still have the music going in the background, kind of like radio people do, and this is very much the same way that they do it, except, like I said, they have an audio mixer, they can do it on the fly, we need to use some software to do it, but that's okay. So, all right, there's my first and second track. We are on a roll, people. So, okay, I'm going to need a new track. Oh, goodness, yeah, because, you know, I've got my talky bit here, but that's it. And you can tell how long you're going because right up here at the top is a timeline. 
So I'm right about 2 minutes and 15 seconds, you know, roughly. And as you saw over here, I just kind of selected a place and faded out from there. Don't be afraid to eyeball things. Like I said, you're not a professional audio engineer, and as long as your end result sounds good to you, you have succeeded. So, okay, I want a, um, I want a musical bit in here right after my intro, and let's use the Tesseract bit, because, you know, why not? So I'm going to go File, Import Audio, one more time. And let's see here. I got Tesseract Interlude 01. Sure, why not? There we go. Now, once again, it always puts it back at the beginning, which is a little bit of a pain, but it, like I said, it's easy to fix. We hit our Time Shift tool up here and just start dragging it to where we need it to be. Now, I'm going to want to do kind of the opposite here. I want the music to fade in while I'm finishing out my little talky bit here. That's just as easy as fading out. Seriously, I'm going to go ahead and hit my selection tool again. We're going to select this. And I'm going to go just a little bit past it. Okay, there we go. Now you notice I'm only selecting this one track. I sort of lined it up here with where I wanted it to be, but I'm still only selecting the one track. And we're going to go to Effects and Fade In. And as you see, no options needed. It just does it. So now I have a fade in, and if I play from there out, editor for not much money. So let's get right into things, and this is how to use Audacity. Okay, see that? I was able to fade in while I was talking, and it sounds pretty darn good. This is how I've done all of these little effects throughout my podcasting days where, you know, I just need to have that layered effect. So you don't have this silence. Silence is bad. It's bad on the radio, and indeed, if you're on radio, silence can get you fined. It's called dead air. Now, you won't get fined for dead air in podcasting, but you will start losing people's attention pretty quickly. So, I've got my intro bit. As you can see, it's still labeled intro. I've got my Tesseract bit, which you can see is right here. And now we're going to get into the middle bit that I've already recorded. So we're just going to keep adding audio tracks. Import audio. And here's the middle part. Yay! Okay, once again, over here, so we need to move it over. Alright, here we go. Alright, so there we go. And... Okay, and I'm going to keep doing this sort of cross-fading thing. Now, there is a cross-fade effect up here, and it's, it's okay, but I kind of like the control I get by doing it like this. Hey, give it a shot and see what you think. If you like it better than what I'm doing, use it. I don't, you're not going to offend me. So, okay, I want to do the same thing again. I want to have the music sort of fade out as I start talking. So, we're going to come up here again, select then. Start it just a little bit before I start talking. Fade out. Excellent. I'm going to move the microphone up here so you can hear it one more time. Because we're going to start from right here. So as you can see, Audacity keeps a sort of a spectroscope thing going here to show you levels. Wow. Listen to that. It's got that annoying hiss in it again. <sighs> Okay, well, no problem. We can just go ahead and take it out. Because even in a multi-track situation like this, you can still edit individual tracks. That's what I'm doing. So, I need to get another sample of that hiss. Like I showed you, you need to tell Audacity what to take out. But it's hard. Look at how small this is. I mean, oh, goodness, wh where do I pull? Well, that's, once again, a thing for your magnifying glass. Let's go ahead and come in here. Oh, look at this. I got, I got a beautiful selection of hiss right in here. That'll be perfect. Let's go ahead and grab that. Okay, there. And then we'll do the noise removal effect again. Oops, noise removal. Got my noise profile. And we'll do noise removal again. And oops, 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 my bad. I need to select this entire thing. So we're gonna select this and get all of that noise out of there. Oh, look, oh dear, it's, oh man. 
it's all over the screen. It's going to take me like, you know, two or three selections to get this over here. I need to zoom out. And that's possible. You just go ahead and hit your magnifying glass again. Hit control on your keyboard, I believe it is. Oops. I'm sorry, it's not control, it's alt. So, you hit, uh, not alt, I'm sorry, shift. Uh, I need more coffee, folks, I really do. So, okay, so I'm going to hit shift, and you'll notice, if you know, put up here where you can see it a little easier. When I hit shift, my little plus in my magnifying glass turns to a minus, and I start zooming out. There we go. Now I can see my whole selection and easily, you know, get this entire bit selected. So, okay, here we go. Done. Let's do the noise removal one more time. Okay. There! Much quieter, much more professional sounding. If nothing else, much less crappy sounding. Okay, so there we go. So once again, you use your magnifying glass to zoom in and hit shift along with your magnifying glass to zoom out. Okay, let's zoom out a little more time. There we go. All right, now. Here's my middle talky bit. Now you see, this isn't very long. I'm not making a huge podcast here. I'm just doing a demo. You might have things that are, you know, 30, 40 minutes long for your podcast. And you'll be zooming in and out, making little changes here and there. Don't be afraid at the amount of time it takes you. I found in the world of audio editing, you can expect to spend maybe, I don't know, maybe three minutes of editing time for every minute of audio you've recorded. So it's like, you know, a three to one ratio. So if you've recorded 10 minutes of audio, you can expect to spend maybe 30 minutes editing it. Unless, you know, you're using some direct hot equipment that's not going to be a problem for you. But, you know, if, there, if there's time taken, that's okay. Take the time. It's, it's easy to do, but I will admit it's time-consuming. So, okay, this is my middle bit ready to go. Now I'm going to fade to a, another musical interlude. Let's go ahead and grab that, import audio. And this time we're going to use that True Vision bit that we just edited not that long ago. There we are. It's over here again, so let's go ahead and move that sucker over. And now you notice I'm starting to run into a problem. Screen real estate. Man, look at this. I have all these tracks and I can't see this in relation to this and this very well. Hmm. Well, fortunately there's a way to deal with that. I'm pretty much done with this. I don't need it anymore. You know, well, I do need it, but I don't need to fiddle with it. I'm done with it. I'm done with this, I'm done with this, I'm probably going to be done with this very soon, too. you notice at the bottom here, there's these little buttons. These little buttons do up and down, and what those do is just mash the track so you don't have all this information here. Now, we'll be getting into this here in a few seconds, but let's leave it alone for now. Okay. And there we go. Look at that. You can still see your tracks, so you can still see things in relation to each other. But it starts freeing up your screen real estate, because, you know, like I said, I'm done with this bit here. I don't really need it that much anymore. There we go. So, okay. So I'm going to be taking this, and I want it to do the same thing. We're going to just do a fade in while I am talking. And, okay, so. Let's just go ahead and do it right about there. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, fade in. There it is. Boom. All right. And, okay, so you can still see all your tracks here. There's one, there's two, there's three. They still have the labels. It doesn't close out the labels. So, okay, done with that. And now we're going to have an outro piece that I've already got recorded. File, import, audio, outro. Come on, double click. There you go. And we'll move that down as needed. There we go, and I'm going to go ahead and make this fade out just like we've been doing. Fade out. Okay, and that'll fade out as I'm talking again. And let's listen to this. Do, do we need to do any editing on this? And I hope you enjoyed this one. Oh, goodness, yeah, it has the, uh, it has the hiss in it, too. So let's go ahead and quick clear that out. And you'll see how quick and simple this is starting to become. I've zoomed into it. I'm going to get my noise profile. Then I'm going to zoom out of it. Select the whole thing. 
apply the filter. Boom. Okay, we're set. And, you know, let's check to make sure it's fading the way we want it to. So here we go. And this concludes our little demo on how to use Audacity, a free open source audio... Done. Okay, so there we go. Now from here on out, I'm going to put a, uh, a an outro piece, which is just going to be basically my opening music again. So, okay, I'm going to go grab that. Yo, there it is again. And there we go. Once again, I'm fighting for screen real estate, so let's let's shrink some of these up. All right, done with that. Here we go. And we'll go ahead and move this down. Once again, using our time shift tool up here. And you're going to mess things up occasionally. You'll be thinking you're on your time shift tool, and you're actually on your highlighting tool. So instead of time shifting it, you wind up highlighting it. That's typical. I've been using Audacity for years, and I still do that. So, you know, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad at all. These things happen. And, okay, so, yeah, after I, whew, after I finish talking, there's like all of this. Wow, that's a lot. I really don't need all that much of that. So let's go ahead and take some of that out. Let's just, you know, for here, let's just cut it from there. Once again, I'm just selecting it. I'm going to hit delete. There it goes. We'll fade it out. There we go. And while I'm talking here, I will fade it in. And about there looks good. Like I said, I'm just eyeballing this. If anything goes wrong, I can always go back and change it. So we're going to fade in after I select it. Once again, got to make sure you select this stuff. There we go. That works well. All right, effect, and we're going to fade in. There we go. All right, we can kind of listen to what that'll sound like. Just learned a few things here and there, and with that, we'll probably go ahead and just cut out to some outro music. And thus, we did cut to some outro music. Now, I've got everything here. This is it. This is all my video, or my video files, my audio files. So, as you can see, everything's layered up. Everything's ready to go. And, see, it kind of looks like the stair-step thing, because you have one, then the other, then the other, then the other, then the other, then the other. And, you know, that's fine. So, there we go. Everything's ready to go. Now, let's talk tweaking, because you almost always have to tweak something. Now, I noticed that my intro here sounded a little loud especially compared to the rest of the stuff. I was a little close to the microphone when I started talking. I want to turn that down a little bit. You know, balance things out. You can do that. So we're going to drop this down here. And you see you have some different controls here. You have a mute, which will just do exactly that. It mutes the thing, you'll never hear it. You'll have a solo, which mutes everything but this. So if you just need to hear this and nothing else, you can do that. You also have this minus and plus, and that's your volume control. So I want to turn this down just a touch. We're going to go like there. And maybe a little bit more. There we go. All right, there we go. And you have this left and right, and what this is is a pan. So if it sounds like you've got more on the left than you do on the right, you can you know make your adjustments. I rarely use that. Sometimes I'll use it for an effect or something like that. I'm going to turn that down just a notch. Done. So, okay, there is the whole thing. That is the podcast. And you should see it's about, you know, four minutes and 15 and change. You know, four minutes, about maybe four minutes and 29 seconds or so. Not bad. Okay, so we're done. What do we do next? Well, we need to export this whole thing as an MP3, because MP3 is usually the language of podcasting. So I'm going to go to File, Export. And now when I export this, it will be the entire thing. Now, before I do that, it's a good idea to save your project. Now, I'm going to go File, Save, and we'll do Save Project. And I usually do Save Project as, just as a, you know, a sort of, how do I put it, a sort of safety, just in case I've got something else going. We're saving an Audacity project file. Yes, that's fine. And we shall just call this Demo Podcast. Save. Okay, done. And now if I close 
all of this out and we'll just get rid of Audacity altogether. I can come in here and I've got my demo podcast.aup, that's an Audacity file, and I'll just be able to open that up without any problem at all. As a matter of fact, I should just be able to open it from here. If not, I can open an Audacity. Sometimes, yep, there we go. Yep, see, everything's back. All of my changes are made. All of the fade-ins and fade-outs are there. It keeps all of that. So, all right, done. Let's go ahead and make this a podcast. We're going to export, and it's going to export the whole thing this time. And I want it to be an MP3 file. And for podcasting, I like to keep my files shorter as far as, you know, size. I don't need a huge file clogging up someone's iPhone or device or whatever, especially if it's audio. If it's audio, you don't need 200, I'm sorry, if it's spoken audio, me talking to you, you don't need a whole lot of quality like you would with music. Music, you expect quality. With, uh, with a spoken word, you don't need quite that level. So what I will usually do is turn this down to either 128 or 96. Now I've got some music in here and I want the music to sound decent. So I'm going to do 128 kilobits per second. Okay. It's already said that I will save this as demo podcast. You can change it if you want. That works for me. Save. It'll ask you for some information that it can put into the, uh, the metadata for the uh, MP3 file. We'll just say artist name is me. Track title is Demo Podcast. There is no album. There is no... It's, uh, yeah, year is 2012. Genre, we can say it's a podcast. Oops, my bad here. P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Comments, you know, cool stuff, whatever. You can even add more. So, good enough and okay. And okay. There we go. Your tracks will be mixed down to two stereo channels in the exported file. That's fine. It will do its thing. There we go. Now this can take a couple minutes to go. And what it's doing is it's basically getting all of these, taking all of your changes and applying them to a single file. So I'm going to fade out here and I will come back when this is done and we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, welcome back. So I did one more quick edit because I noticed just before I faded out that the um, the intro was a bit long, you know, the intro music bit, so I just went ahead and cut part of that um, and did the same thing that I've shown you how to do. I selected part of it and then just hit delete and then I did a fade in on it to kind of give it a nice sort of intro bit sort of feel. So okay, I've got the uh, the demo podcast which you can see is 2.7 megs. And I also did a 96 kilobit mix down, which is 2.1 megs. A little bit smaller, and you'll find that the larger your audio files get, the more this will make a difference. 128 will be much bigger than a 96 uh, uh, kilobit. So make, just, just pick the one that works for you. If you've got a lot of voiceover and not so much music, 96 kilobits is probably fine. So, okay. Let's have a look at what this sounds like. I'm going to open with... Oh, let's just go ahead and open with Banshee. Take it a moment. And there's that fade-in I was talking about. And that's, that's it. After all that, we are left with a audio file that we have made from our own parts or from parts that we have collected. And we have two different versions of it that we'll be able to upload to whatever we wish to upload. Now, it doesn't have to be a podcast, of course. You can do this with any sort of audio file you want. I've mixed music in uh, Audacity using it as a sort of uh, sequencer. 
So Audacity has a lot of uses. You can use it for you know your own music stuff. You can use it for things like podcasting and just general audio editing. So if your library or your life needs a sort of audio mixer that you don't want to pay a whole lot of money for but still want a lot of functionality out of, I cannot recommend Audacity highly enough. And with that, back to me. I know this is crazy, but here's my number. So call me maybe the uh, Hi, hi. Um, welcome back. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on Carly Rae Jet on, on Audacity. And I hope it opened up some ideas, some new things to you as to what you can do with an audio editor. Not, you don't just have to make a podcast. You can listen, you know, you can set it up for musical work and layering different effects from a keyboard. You can do all kinds of things with it. The reason I picked a podcast to show you is you can see the layers and editing and how you can make changes to various tracks and how they relate to other tracks and things like that. So it gives you some ideas, it gives you something to work on. If you've got any questions, I totally recommend that you get a hold of me. Cyberpunklibrarian at gmail.com or you can just hit me up on the website where this video was posted. qcfriends.org slash notallbits. Either way, get in touch with me, get in contact with me. I'm happy to help you out. I'm not an Audacity expert. I've been using it for a long time, but there's plenty of stuff in there that I've never even touched because I haven't needed it. So. I'll do the best I can to help you out. That's what I'm here for. After all, I'm a librarian. I get paid to answer questions. But if nothing else, check it out. For your time, it's absolutely free. It's an easy to use program that has a lot of wonderful features that I think you can, uh, I think you can use in your library or just in your life if you need an audio editor. So thanks for coming in. Thanks for checking me out. We'll have another video up here in about three weeks, and uh, I think the next video we'll be covering a little something about video editing, and I'll show you how the two kind of tie together, because you'll be very surprised, I think, as to how audio editing and video editing has so much in common, despite the fact that they're very different mediums, after all. So, check us out next time. Hope to see you back here soon. As always, leave questions or comments on the blog or through my Gmail, and remember, you don't have to be high tech to be low life, but it certainly helps if you're a cyberpunk. Take care, folks. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Three,